Do you know what cow milk is? Man, pus. cow milk, a good percentage of it is pus. Action. My whole life they lied to me. They've been lying to me since I was a kid. First, they told me milk does a body good, and then they took me to the D.A.R.E. program. The D.A.R.E. program, uh, drug, assistance, resistance, education, <laughs> this tongue twister ass. Then they gave me uh, Captain Planet. The planet is yours. They gave me all these ideas about uh, don't, be a, don't, don't pollute the planet, all this stuff. Like, hey, man, you're supposed to be telling me that life can be over at any time. Abundance is great. Have babies, reproduce, be powerful, all this, all this stuff, man. They tried to confuse me. I'm not confused no more. I can see it now, cause I can see what they're doing to the kids right now. They said, "Are you a boy? Uh, Are you a girl?" Uh, They're it's indoctrination <laughs> on a mass scale. You look at them being indoctrinating their babies, and you think they just started that? <laughs> this they ain't new to this. They true to this. Hey, how is that not? Abuse. How was that not child abuse to indoctrinate a child at such a young age to not be naturally who they are? Do you know what cow milk is? Man, pus. cow milk, a good percentage of it is pus. And so you've been telling me since I was a baby, milk does a body good. The United States government paid for those commercials. Well, not just the United States government. Right. It was the Food and Drug Administration <laughs> on top of the milk lobby, the dairy lobby. Lobbyists have been selling us products since the beginning of time, or since the beginning of America. We just went through this stuff, man. We just went through COVID-19, and they sold the entire world some defective vaccine that wasn't a vaccine, made trillions of dollars, and then said, oh, it's all good. Hey, man, look, I think this is me personally talking. I think that the gender issue of children in regards to children is single handedly one of the most dangerous things we could be doing in society. I've been speaking on it a lot. I see it. And you know, when it hits home is when your children are talking about it. Like when my, when my child tells me, when my young daughter tells me that in her camp, in her cabin at camp, there is a young man who is identifying as a girl that they have to treat as a girl in there. How confusing is that? It's not even confusing. It's a lie. It's dangerous. And, and it should make you angry. It should make me angry. American men should be outraged. American women, you're the, you should be the single-handedly, the most powerful voice in America about this issue. But when it comes to this specifically, all you got to do is ask why. Why do two men want to raise a child together? Why? I mean, I don't even, I don't have an answer to the why. I'm just saying, if you really want to have a baby, you would go create a baby. And so you didn't. And so... What type of attachment do you have to that child? And hey, here's a deeper question that I have when we start talking about like artificial insemination and things like that. And I know there's a larger topic for this for people that just can't conceive. <clears throat> but my thing is, well, you what's know, that number? We say I things, don't know. We say those things so arbitrarily. Right, right, right. When it comes true. to people who can't conceive, you're looking at less than five percent of the total population. And I'm being extremely generous. But it's like. You never want to say something that's going to rob someone of that potential chance to have a child in a conventional household. However, comma, I will say this. Where are these kids coming from? What's the family background on those seeds that you're choosing? Because the great part about procreating with someone that you know and getting to meet their family, you know what you're going to get. Genetic information is real. It's passed down. So who are you putting in these wounds? Where are these test tube children coming from and how do they really affect society over time? This is a question no one's really asking. I want what, was the, what, what are going to be the numbers on this in the future? All this stuff is about to stop like because they see that the things they're saying is absolutely wrong. Any reasonable person knows it's absolutely wrong. Candace Owens, uh, Matt Walsh, these individuals, the Daily Wire, when they shine the light on it, you can see it. And you say, man, this is really, really dumb. So simultaneously, while I'm saying that men should have the ability to raise their children however they see fit. Now, what do you do when you have a father who's dressing his son up like a little girl? What do you do when you have a father like Dwayne Wade? What do you and all these Hollywood people, they all live in the same social circle. It's a mental contagion like around here. Uh, Alpha MLK through color and everything. <laughs> man, they got slabs. All right. Yeah. And some folks, they be having the South Side fade or whatever you see. The culture is contagious. And so in Hollywood, you see a little little children dressed up like the opposite gender. And it's just, it's caught on. And it's taken America by storm. And so when I say, man, it's, it's, it's such a small group of people. It's like 2% of the total population that identifies as, as that trans way. And so why are we listening to 2% of the total population? Simultaneously, 
hard segue. Jews are about 2% of the total population. Uh, Why are we listening to 2% of the population? <laughs> this boy is trying to get us back. I was listening to Ben Shapiro. I was listening to another gentleman, and they were talking about the, the size of the black community. He was actually said... Um, the black community is only 13% of the total population, so why should we do anything for that 13% of the total population? Well, my total population is bigger than your total population, so you should do things for my total population. He really said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Hey, listen. It, yeah. might, uh, it might not have been Ben Shapiro. I don't want to misquote the person. Y'all ain't gave us reparations yet. That's going to be my answer for everything. We can quantify it. We know what we did. You know, you can talk about anti-Semitism. You can talk about all these different groups that experience racism in this country. We're not going to deny that. We're not going to deny that there shouldn't be any discrimination. We're not going to deny. We don't want to see people be disenfranchised. However, comma, we know what slavery was about. We know what it did. Y'all hadn't paid us. So how are you always trying to further subjugate us than we already have been? That is my question to all of these groups. Why? And we've talked about this. Yvette Cornell has said this too. The American government knows how to distribute this money. They do know how to distribute this money. They can totally do this, but they, they just, hadn't. They just gave immigrants EBT cards and credit cards. They say, here goes a debit card to go spend this money. They're doing it right in front of your face. And you have people saying, hey, why are you mad at the immigrant? Hey, I'm here right now. And you're passing laws to tell me that I can't compete in my own economy. Men should be extremely worried about competing in the economy just to have food and water, but not really. Because the way that the world has always existed, if I really get hungry, if I really get hungry, we going to eat. Exactly. We going to eat. <laughs> and so when I'm asking you politely in the most chivalrous way possible to please respect my humanity and allow me to eat like a decent person. Because I don't want to be. <laughs> Hell no. You know what? No, no, no. Let's get to it. Let's we ain't finna skip that. We ain't, we ain't skipping that shit. We finna get into it. We finna talk about criminality. We finna talk about criminality. Because the thing is, you asked me this question one time, dog. And I want to use this moment to get into it. You said, how do we ignite the gangster? How do you get the drug dealer? How do you get the gangbanger to see what we're talking about and get into this movement and uplift himself is? One, he has to recognize that he's a man and that he has a right to get work. He has a right to provide for his family and not get, enter into another situation that helps the establishment more than what it's already been. He doesn't have to enter into another form of slavery. So he has to be educated and we have to uplift him and get him right now. Because I'm going to tell you something about black people. We scam culture and all that right there. We are easily attracted to it because we don't feel like we can access wealth in any other kind of way. Political ideas have not been given to us outside of pan-Africanism and black nationalism, which destroys us. And that those are the guys and brothers that we do really need to reach and say, you're a man. Hey, black, Go ahead. Black nationalism is good. <laughs> black nationalism is good. I ain't no pan-Africanist, but I mean, I as, feel, as far as a, a black American man to be America first, that's great. Okay. And with that definition... I'm on board with that. But when I talk about a lot of a lot of like when you think about RBG, Pan-Africanism, their idea is separate. They want to be separated from the government. Now, in that terms of black nationalism, we are black. We're American. We need to be proud of our country and proud of our communities I with just, that. I didn't like when you say RBG, the uh, red, black and green movement. I was just, I heard the words. I'm black. <laughs> I'm a descendant of a slave in America. Number one. Right. And number two, I'm a nationalist. <laughs> right. Right. I'm a Right. I'm a veteran of the United States military. I Same. served and defended this place, and I will continue to do so. And that's why it makes me so angry. When I started this thing, because you were talking about the gangster, I started talking about milk and how the 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 drug the uh, the food pyramid was created by the government in collaboration with the other food industries in America. They know what they're doing. When you look at the people who, so the Italian mob. They became the Italian mob because there was a response to the government not addressing their needs. They said, if you're not going to protect our community, then we'll protect our community. The same thing with the Russian mob. And so I don't look at the Bloods and the Crips as any different. They, they live in disenfranchised communities that have been subjugated by, the, hey, we need, this is, this, why do you need housing projects? Why do you need housing projects? You don't need housing projects. You don't care about poor people. But over here uh, in the poor community that I exist in, we need to make sure that Minute Maid Park and we need to make sure that NRG Stadium 
has enough workers to make sure you get your warm pretzel and your peanuts and your drinks from the concession stand. We need to make sure that we have places to live for the help. And that's how you get dilapidated project housing. They don't just do it out of the kindness of their own heart. They need labor. They don't just bring immigrants from Mexico and El Salvador and from all around the world. They need labor. They need cheap labor. And I believe that that's the point. Like that's that's the trade off that no one's, you know, understanding. A lot of times you'll have people that people that have migrated from other places or that have some connection to immigration fighting for immigration because they feel it truly represents them. No, it doesn't. If you're middle class, if you're middle class and you're in this mug making six figures, how is immigration? How are you really tied to it? The whole point when you see Im true immigration, people come here. They don't speak any English and they're working in fucking Wendy's and McDonald's. Why do you think they're there? Because they know they need the help. They can get it very cheaply and they're going to provide a community for them to work in. Why hadn't we done that for black Americans? Why have we not done that for black Americans? Why have we not talked about gentrification and what it's really doing? In Houston, there's no zoning at all. When you, when you ask me why is it rhetorical? I know exactly. I know why. Because the black men and other politicians who get into power, they take some money. And they look the other way because nobody wants to be poor. It's, it's a dog eat dog world. I'm going to I'm going to sustain myself. And that's it. That's how these people exist. Michael Jordan said Republicans buy shoes. I might, I might be misquoting him. <laughs> might be Democrats buy shoes. Too. <laughs> and so like right. at some point in time, men have to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Right. And if that's not how the society is built up, if there are no men who are willing to sacrifice their life for the greater good of this society, then you will not have a society. And so as much as I want to put it off on women, I can't because they don't even have the ability to defend their own ideas. There are men who are creating and perpetuating the ideas that keep other men subservient. And I'm like, okay. And for y'all, we got some for you. We're going to show up in the most peaceful, powerful protest in the history of the world. It's called the 10 Million Man March. Come on. It's when all these men who are on child support, yes. if you're a convicted felon, whatever, you deserve the right to participate in this government also. And just because I was convicted of a crime, if I go to prison, right, and I, if I serve two years and I serve my time, and now I should be a whole citizen once again, I should be able to defend myself the same way that you defend yourself. How does me committing a crime tell me that I can't defend myself in our society? That's crazy. I'm talking about the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. How about that? Can we talk about the First Amendment and the right to freedom of speech? We, have the, we should have the ability to articulate what's happening to us and not be demonized and say, hey, y'all are trying to oppress women. When all the, that's double speak when the law really does oppress us. And having a right to labor, like having a right to labor, to work, to take care of yourself, having restrictions on artificial intelligence, having restrictions on what can be automated, you know, having the right to have real people at call centers to really communicate to you and help you. Like, this is where citizens I, have to just get involved. Go ahead. We can figure this a little bit. I'm just building with you in real time. Okay, because, come on. Because you said uh, restrictions on AI. No, 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 no. I want access to AI. Mm. Right here in this place that I live right now, um, it's a monopoly. AT&T is the only uh, provider for internet services. And the only internet they have right here, right now, is 18 megabytes a second. In more affluent areas, you're getting like a gigabyte a second. There are a, th a there are a thousand megabytes in a gigabyte. That's all? That's the limit? 18 megabytes that, a second. That's the limit? I, <laughs> I, because I'm... 18 megabytes a second. And the product that they're selling is cost 18, this 18 megabytes a second. They charge $75. What? And so access to information, it's it's really the new redlining. This apartment complex can only have AT&T. So that means all the little children, when they're doing COVID, and my little children are over here with their little tablets, 18 megabytes a second. The, you can't do anything except for homework. You can't do anything except for watch a movie. This is the reality. And so when we're having these conversations about poverty, this is very specific. They're making lots of money off people being poor and selling them inferior goods. Hey, man, you said a lot, and I'm shocked at this point. Not now I become like if I'm out there looking in, you know, so like, wait a minute, $75 for that? Yes. That is robbery. That is ro that is robbery. That is ridiculous that you would pay that amount of money for an internet that is not functioning at a high at its highest level. I was paying less than that somewhere near the heights. And so like but so when you see how people are being 
No one's having this conversation. They don't even, if you don't have faster internet, then how can you conversate with chat GPT? How can you converse with chat GPT? How can you engage with these large language models? How can you run 3D printers? How can you run your home? All these technologies that exist, they're being experienced by the, 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 the mm. I can't say rich because middle class America does also have access to Oculus and all these, the PlayStation 5. But technology is is how you create upward mobility, giving people access to technology. And if we don't have access, if I don't have access to, well, you know, I figure it out. I'm going to go to the library. I'm going to go to McDonald's. I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure this video get edited so I can bring it directly to you. That's because I, I believe that content creators right now are the new revolutionaries. I believe that wholeheartedly. Uh, Gil Scott Heron said the revolution will not be televised because the television is controlled by corporate interests. Now the internet is also controlled by corporate interests. And now we have to speak in code. I have to say, I have to use alternate words because if I don't use the right words in the right way, then the algorithm says, uh-uh-uh, you can't say that. And the video goes nowhere. So that's why when we're having these conversations, it's so important for you to share the conversation. You need to go tell your friends, man, there's two black guys on, on, on YouTube and they really talking that stuff. <laughs> hey, man, you know, people that get up here, we talked about how to organically do this. This is why you need to like this, subscribe and share because of what you just said. Do you know who don't know that? Do you know it's somebody in this community right now that doesn't even understand that, that needs to hear this information? When you've heard the truth and it resonates, it does change you. You'll never be the same when you hear it. This needs to go out. People need to be engaged in this conversation. Why? Because what we're using our YouTube to do is engage in, participate in, and add to debauchery. That is what we're doing. We're not having, hey, with that type of internet, you're going to be phased out and they're going to even be able to do that. Somebody going to be copying what you're doing, which we're seeing. We're seeing other cultures copy debauchery, make money off of it, and not even really act like that in their real lives. Like we, that's an American, hey, dog, we have American homegrown citizens going through that. Right now. We are American. Hey, my lineage in this country goes back before the Civil War. I am an American. I am an American. I'm here just like you, just like anybody else that says they're American. I am an American first. And we're, we are with other Americans. These people in this community, I guarantee you. See, in the South, we don't got a lot of Caribbean lineage. These people, I'm talking about slave factory <laughs> to your home. This is from slave lineage to this so, to, to, to right now. And so we don't have the access we need. What makes me, what makes me so excited to, to say that I'm an American is because you allowed racism to co-opt your identity because you were so mad at the white KKK boy. You was like, I got to be something else. I can't be from this place. Hey, sometimes at home ain't the best place, but it's up to you to fix home. Come on. Huh? I mean, hey, so, hey, your daddy loves you even <laughs> though you said he was an alcoholic. Huh? <laughs> oh, come on. Your daddy loves you even though he whooped you a couple of times. Huh? He, you're a better human being for it. And so now you look at your children and you say, I will never whoop my children. And they worse than you ever thought that you could be. <laughs> That's why I am not for leaving the country. I am not for abandoning my American roots. All families have dysfunction. All families. You know, I heard T.D. Jake say this. The first family had dysfunction, Cain and Abel. The first fam the very first family that the Bible talks about is dysfunctional. There's dysfunctional families everywhere. You don't abandon it. You fix it. You do whatever you can to get it right. So why would I leave this dysfunctional family? I'm not going to do that at all. And I'm rooted here, deeply rooted. I can't change what's already been happened to me. I can't change the trauma. And so when I say things that I've been brainwashed and, my, and I've been co-opted by the American government and fed ideas through the media, I'm just acknowledging that if all the media companies are owned by like four families and they're all feeding me the same entertainment, the things that I think I only think them because you told me to think them. And so when I'm talking to you, like I don't really want to talk about what everyone else is talking about because they were programmed to talk about that. I want to talk about things that are going to actually change your life and make you powerful. Access to powerful internet makes you powerful. Being able to have the first amendment makes you powerful. We got to be thought leaders. And I think we have that in our community. I think we have that. I think if you channel that energy that you put into, uh, hey, dog, 
Okay, something that I do. We all have like a guilty pleasure. I love watching street TV. I love watching those things where they talk about the dynamics of gang culture in L.A. But there's a dude that breaks it down like he's the National Geographic guy of gang sets. He understands every gang set, every color, every hat. Do you understand how much thought process and intellect it goes into knowing that? Do you know that if you could teach him stocks, bonds, how to uh, utilize that or engineering or, hey, how to bring Internet here? Do you could you imagine what that mind could or do how somewhere to, else or how to galvanize those men that he understands so well to communicate to them to participate in the 10 million man march? Because they're also part of the American men who have been disenfranchised by this political system that sees a black man. And either you can go work at Walmart and make $22,000 a year, or you can go to prison and I'll pay $30, $32,000 a year for you. It's an interesting thing. To be free is a, is a pay cut for America, huh? It's cheaper for you to be on the street than it is for you to be incarcerated. These are real numbers in how America spends money on the American person. All I know is that if you have a system where you can afford to spend $30,000 a head on American men, and you have over a, a million American men in prison... All you got to do is do the numbers. You're destroying families while you're perpetuating slavery in this modern time. And all you, and you say, but he committed a crime, though. So every time I commit a crime, if, if I go steal something, I, you just, I go steal $500 from the local <laughs> convenience store. You know, go ahead. You should spend $150,000 for me to be incarcerated. You ought to clip in my little clip. I seen the little clip that you put of me talking about Kamala. <laughs> I seen, I seen it. Kama I seen that because Kamala's agenda is I'm a, all these politicians. I'm be tough on crime. When you say crime, you're writing the laws to create the criminals. I'm gonna tell you something though. Write a law that makes the write a law that makes sure that the the majority of people affected by that law are women. Turn turn the majority of women into criminals. Do that. I don't know how much time we got, but I hope we got enough to get into this because this is a good segue. We got to now talk about that immigration thing, man. Like when you talk about immigrants outnumbering us, black people, right? Correct. Right, right, right. Okay. And we start talking about those jobs, man, this becomes now a big conversation, even bigger when you actually put it into context. A lot of information that we're getting, it's not really in proper context. I'll, I'll put it in context for you right now. Go ahead. You said reparations. Yep. Okay. Every single state of, of in America right now, they have immigration laws. They have an immigration budget. They have allocated money to bring these funds in. If you're allocating money for immigration, that's the depth that they could be equivalent to reparations. Every state should have a reparations fund for descendants of slaves in America. They're doing it on a state level. You can do it on a federal level. Man, this ain't hard. You're doing it for people who don't look like me. Do it for me. Oklahoma, why you ain't paying them people for Tulsa? We know that that happened, dog. We, how are y'all still denying the repayment for Tulsa, Oklahoma, by the way? Because when you talk about states, that was a state. That's a state level issue. But I agree. All of these states, Texas, you were the last state to free slaves or one of the last you were but as we i think on record the the last you were one of the last if not the last state to free slaves how do you not have some type of implementation for against just gentrification just against like just, hey these areas are historical they became about because of this you cannot come and build in these areas they must be sustainable for black people descendants of slaves there's so much division and the black and black Americans are so divided, even on terminology. If you ask a uh, hundred black people what they are, ninety are probably going to say black, and out of the ten, you might get like uh, uh, Adolf or uh, FBA or something like this. We're so divided on who we are. And if you ask a hundred black people on how we help the black community, you're going to get a hundred different answers. Because, but every other group. And every other nation around the world, they understand. You say, hey, America, give me some money. And America gives them some money. And they go about their merry way. But but black people are like, I can't ask America for no money. I don't want that money. That's, that's blood money. But you spend blood dollars. And you drive blood cars. And you live in this bloody ass nation. As you so happy for the sacrifice your ancestors made. For you to participate in conspicuous consumption. 
Because we praise stupid shit. I'm sorry, I gotta say it like that. We do. We right. we 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 do not like intellectual conversations. We are not. We are not allowing ourselves to be challenged. There's a, gr- a large group of us that can be challenged, but just look at how easily we are distracted by the simplest things online and social media, and it's driven by black media. Black media is easily distracted. How can you ever have a solution if you ain't willing to do nothing? Like you have to be willing to do something. And if you and if you understand the consequences that this types of conversations lead to, when you start to challenge the power structure, then the power structure collapses upon your head. And that's what every revolutionary in the history of America has understood. And I watch some of my favorite creators, some of my favorite YouTubers. All you do is become like a paid talking head. You're in your content and it sounds so good. And then all of a sudden it's now. Please buy this product from a person who just paid me $150,000. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. Support the content. And so all we're doing is creating our own ecosystems and echo chambers where we're perpetuating the exact... Male ch- a male channel will sit there and bash women all day. A female channel will sit there and bash men all day. A Republican channel will sit there and bash Democrats all day. And so on and so forth. We got mad at Fox News and CNN and MSNBC for not providing accurate information that was non-biased. But the human nature is to be non-biased. Why do I care about people that I don't care about? They don't affect me. It doesn't affect my life and it doesn't affect my bottom line. And so when I understand that every other group is operating as a group, I look at my brother and I say, we 13% of the total population. And it's not about the Democrat. It's not about the Republican. I know that they've used misinformation to control me. They've used John Singletary. They use Spike Lee. They use all of these wonderful people that I think make great movies to entertain me and to, and to dull them. <laughs> they turn me into just a, 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 a content slave. And I want to be a content warrior. I want to be a content revolutionary. I want to use the same system they created to control me to fight back with the 10 million man march. <laughs> they, 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 they told me so many. They made me drink pus. <laughs> they told me nuclear power was bad. They told me smoking marijuana was terrible. They wanted me to snitch on my friends and my parents. We destroyed homes because they said crack is so terrible. Nah. Poverty is so terrible. <laughs> and that's true. And with 13% of the population, we should have very high numbers of black people in the workforce, at least labor like that's working, that can actually take care of their families, that should have access to so much, that should have access to EBT cards. They got mad at Donald Trump because he said black jobs. You know what black jobs are? The place where black folks be working. <laughs> <laughs> you had these mother, you had these lawyers and doctors like, oh, this is a black job, this is a black job. It's 90% Caucasian. Those jobs just working there, there's 90% white, 100% white. You like the one black speck, okay? And so black jobs is the airport, service industry, throwing bags, uh, uh, doing hard-ass work. And you know this. Black folks is working hard to make America go. And we ain't never, and we never got our will to do. It's it's such a matriarch society. Like women are leading the conversation. We're following what they're talking about. We have a very feminine. Uh, well, overall, I'm not either. But overall, black. <laughs> I ain't gonna speak for them, nigga. Ain't no woman telling me to do shit. Exactly. But when you look at the black community, look, look at how many men are mimicking what women say. Like when I get on here and look, when I talk politics on this thing, and I get on this Facebook. The men sound just like the women when they're arguing. Huh, what do you, what Facebook, do you mean? Because Facebook is a feminine space. Like I can't. Per- I don't want to. Di- this is a digital reality, but men dominate the physical reality. That's true. And I want ten million men to come outside and get physical. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.